Joining us now is Bruce Lavelle, a longtime advisor to President Trump and a media surrogate for the Republican National Committee. So, Bruce, I want to start with the recent comments made by Joe Biden. Of course, he was on the Breakfast Club this morning where he said essentially that all Democrats should be vote or all blacks rather should be voting for the Democratic candidates, not the Republican. Uh, that's gotten a lot of backlash. I want to get your response to that comment. Yeah, well, you know, it's typical. You know, it's it's very pompous. It's very uh Business as usual. And you know, the sad thing, Alex, and thanks for having me, is that unfortunately this narrative is the same thing. It's nothing new. I mean, you know, it's nothing new. They've always come in the black communities and they promise the world and then leave and come back four years later. And the sad part about this, this is this is part of that thing I've been saying all along as a black American here in the South in Atlanta, a 27-year business owner here in Atlanta, that it's 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 a dismal as usual, it's business as usual in terms of taking us for granted, going in there and can say anything and do whatever, and oh, they're gonna vote for me anyway. It's very arrogant and very disrespectful, I might say. And when we talk about the African-American community going into November as well, it seems like this administration is really focusing on the outreach efforts, maybe more so than prior Republican administrations. I mean, I think of the First Step right. Act. I think of uh, the president constantly saying that the unemployment for African-Americans <clears throat> is better than it's been for any other administration. Is there an opportunity here for Republicans maybe to gain some of that black support going into the November elections? Well, yeah, it started in 2015, and you saw the roundtable in Detroit. You saw my older brother from a mother, another mother, another mother, Pastor Darrell, when he said this is the greatest pro-black president in his lifetime. And I've said that also, Alex. And I say that because you look at the the, the things he's done in terms of uh, underserved communities, the opportunity zones, you see what, the, like you said, the step one act. And watch this. This president has challenged all of black America to build your generational wealth, to build your small business, to go in and, and educate your people and have your own say-so in your local schools, standing behind charter schools where local decisions are made. You know, this is, this is unheard of in any other candidate. And then also saying, hey, what do you have to lose? Okay, I, I take that challenge. And so no candidate or no president has been as bold as President Donald J. Trump to ask and to deliver, sir, the lowest black unemployment recorded since 1972, number one economy. Listen, bro, right here in Atlanta, right here, number one city in the country for black business growth, right here, Alex. Mm. You can go right down here to South Atlanta, all over the city, and you see in the last two years a spur of black businesses growing everywhere. So under this administration, President Trump gets it. He's a business guy. He understands a balance sheet. Joe Biden has been in, the, what, 50 years? He's never ran a balance sheet. He's always taken black business and black folk for granted. And now you're starting to see the real Joe, the one who authored, watch this, Alex, who authored the 1994 crime bill, which was the largest, largest mass incarceration of African-American black folk in the history of the United States. And I'm like, my God, these people are actually going to go back and vote for this guy? Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a sad day uh, with Joe Biden. It really is, Alex. And it's not only the, those on the right voicing those concerns. If you look back to the primary, Senator Kamala Harris was saying the very the same thing, even going all the way back to the 70s regarding his busing policies. And then you bring up the crime bill, which I think is very important, too. It's still on the forefront yeah. of a lot of uh, young black African-American minds who and know what that did to a lot of the people that they know and love. And now when we look at the coronavirus response, too, we see that it is disproportionately affecting young black people in particular, as well as the older ones like the rest of the country. But a large part of that is because they're in urban areas where they're impoverished for the most part. They don't have the type of access that you're talking about to these economic benefits. Is that the right. argument that the Republicans have to be making, saying you are in this position because of maybe may, many liberal policies? Maybe it is time to try something different economically. Well, I agree. And, and here's something on that, because I've heard this many, many times. The COVID-19, Alex, is affecting black, white, tall, small, Asian, Hispanic, what have you. Like any pandemic, like any economic downturn, anything we have, it's always the poor and the underserved. No matter what color you are, it's going to have a tough time. So I think it's, 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 not, it's not good to blame that this all of black folk are having. Yes, there are some, there are some white folk that I know that are poor having a tough time, yeah. Hispanic folk. But at the end of the day, the only way of getting out of any type of turmoil, whether it be pandemic or financial, is economic development and bringing in jobs and bringing in opportunities where you are sustainable in your own business, your own home, to take care of your family. 
So I, I, I think that that's a that that falls flat. The argument that I see that they're trying to create the narrative. You saw the the Surgeon General where he challenged some of the community, say, "Hey, let's talk about some of the pre-existings. Let's talk about health. Let's talk about nutrition. Let's talk about what you're eating. Let's talk about not vaping and smoking. And let's talk about moderation. You know, these things are the conversations that with health, because you know the 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 hardest part about COVID nineteen is pre-existing. So. I have to push back on that. Say it affects all folks who are who are in a tough time economically and in the community. So yeah. I don't think the COVID uh, picks a different color. I think it picks everyone, un unfortunately. No, I think you're right to say that because it really does come down to people's economic uh, ability to either yeah. get Medicare or get health care and able to yeah. go to work even. I mean, there's some people, if they're put in a position where they can't stay home, they do have to go back out to work. They have to put themselves at the risk. I think you're right to say that, that it's more about an economic type of thing than it is about race or anything like that. But Bruce Lavelle, I really appreciate you coming on tonight and breaking down this complicated issue yes. for us. Thank you.